A reading from the Gospel of John. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I shall not call you servants any more, because the servant does not know his master's business. I call you friends, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. You did not choose me, no, I chose you, and I commissioned you to go out and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then the Father will give you everything you ask him in my name. What I command you is to love one another. The word of the Lord. In the Second World War, a Franciscan priest was arrested for speaking against the government. His name was Maximilian Kolbe. One day, someone robbed some bread from the soldier's dining room, and the commandant got together all the prisoners to find out who was the thief. But they did not find the thief, so the commandant chose ten men to die. One of them, the father of many children, began to cry, and Father Maximilian offered to take his place to die to save this man. So Father Maximilian Colby is now a saint of the church, and the man whose life he saved was present in St. Peter's Square in Rome on the day that he was canonized by Pope Paul VI on October the 17th, 1971. This news came to mind as I see the connection with this week's gospel. Jesus says, No one has greater love than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Indeed, that was fulfilled that day in the heroic act of the co-worker. I can only imagine the terror of that moment, but that one of his fellow prisoners did not think twice to save him. That we might all be friends like that. That we might all have friends like that. Jesus speaks so beautifully about the love of the Father and calls us to remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. He says, love one another as I have loved you. With five words, Jesus transforms himself into our model of love, our ideal of love, as I have loved you. We know that this love is very difficult, if not impossible, to achieve, just like the bravery of the co-worker. Yet we know that with God all things are possible. Nothing is impossible to God. What distinguishes that love that Christ speaks of? There are three words that for me speak of that love inspired by and blessed by God. Self-giving, forgiving, and thanksgiving. Jesus showed us what it means to give of oneself, not only in his earthly life and ministry, but in his suffering, death, and resurrection. From the cross, he shows us the depths of self-giving, of sacrifice. The cross becomes the pulpit from which he speaks to us of love. This is a little story, perhaps I've already mentioned in a previous homily, about a farmer's birthday, and all the animals decided to give him a special breakfast. The cows offered milk and the chickens offered eggs, but the pigs remained silent. Finally, the other farm animals complained to the pigs that they were not giving anything to the breakfast. Then one of the pigs said, That is easy for you, for you it is a contribution. For us it is a commitment. Jesus doesn't want contributions of love when we feel up to it, when we like, when it suits our schedule. He wants a commitment of love. When it is difficult, when we are short-tempered, when it is not involving our most favored person. Self-giving is that example of love that inspires people to do things, not only in the name of love, but also in the name of God. Then love is forgiving. If we truly love, we must forgive as we want to be forgiven. Over and over again in the Lord's Prayer we say, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Yet how difficult it is to mirror these sentiments when someone's words or actions cut like a knife in our heart and we feel disrespected or taken for granted. Again, from the cross, Jesus speaks to us of forgiveness. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Here he is proclaiming his love for us. There he is giving again an example of true love, inspiring forgiveness. This is how much we are loved. Our challenge is to love and forgive as we are loved and forgiven. We celebrate the forgiveness of God in the sacrament of reconciliation. 
The third quality of that love that mirrors God's love is thanksgiving. We should be filled with the spirit of gratitude, with the realization how much we are loved by God. In our better moments, we know and experience that love, but sometimes that knowledge and experience appear short-lived in our memories. Many times, attitudes of the lack of thanksgiving, the lack of appreciation abound. The famous actress Helen Hayes wrote about her experience as an 18-year-old actress on the day that World War I ended. While many went out to party and celebrate, she decided to go to St. Patrick's Cathedral and give thanks. She thought there would be no one there. The church was so packed that she had to pray her prayer of thanksgiving from the front steps. Thanksgiving and gratitude should be a part of our lives and our vocabulary. That we are constantly giving thanks to God for his love and his blessings. May our lives reflect these realities of self-giving, forgiving, and thanksgiving. Today, as these children of our parish community receive Jesus for the first time in Holy Communion, we recall that love of God, the Father for us, in sending us his Son, and the love of Jesus for teaching us how to live in union with the Father through his life, suffering, death, and resurrection. Today you enter into a new and deeper friendship with Jesus as you come to the table of the Lord and do three things, three things that we talked about in one of our times together. We come to eat, to share, and to celebrate. Just like around our table at home, we to be healthy, we come to the table, this table, to be healthy in our spiritual life, our life with God. Just like we share around the table at home, how our day has been, what are our joys and concerns, at this table we share our prayer and our songs. Just as around our table at home we celebrate special events, birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, first communions, we celebrate each day that we love one another, that we care for one another's well-being, and that we are healthy and strong. As you receive Holy Communion and return to your pew to be with your family, say a prayer of thanksgiving to Jesus for this sharing in his life. Pray to always seek to be forgiving of others and pray to be generous in sharing your gifts and talents. Then the grace of this sacrament will be real and visible to all whom you know and love.